Thank you, Mom. You're welcome. Morgan and Melanie are typical siblings. They're very good friends sometimes, and no fighting, and always good companions. Melanie is the oldest. I'm in seventh grade, and I like school most of the time. The Blum family has always had a household full of dogs. I grew up with dogs, had large dogs all my life um, when I was a child and in adulthood. Brandy, don't walk. The girls have always been comfortable around them, but one late evening in 2006, Something happened that a seven-year-old Melanie and her mom were not expecting. We ran into a neighbor of ours that was walking a dog. She lived up the street from us and had previously had a dog that we knew. And um, I guess had, I, I had thought gotten a new dog. As it turned out later, I guess she was fostering this dog. Melanie asked permission from her mom to pet the neighbor's new Akita. It was really fluffy, big white fluffy dog, and I just... I thought it was really cute, so I wanted to pet it. They both didn't expect what happened next. The dog just attacked her and just didn't let go. The dog came like closer, jumped on me, I fell back. I just jumped on the dog and I opened its mouth and I freed Melanie's head and I just laid on the dog. The injuries to Melanie's head and face were devastating. I got bit here on my cheek. It's kind of hard to see, but and then I also got bit by my eyebrow. Right there. Yeah, it's yeah. right here. And um, my hairline right right here, that, that's a scar. Um, I got bit up here and on my finger um, right there. And also her oh, ear. Oh, my ear. They had to, um, the dog took a chunk out of my ear and they had to kind of sew it. So <laughs> I think my ears are different now. But She had the fairly severe lacerations about her face and uh, she's healed up quite well and she's done well after it but it was a it was a tragedy for the family and for Melanie and for the whole community when it happened and it always it's always that way for these children because they're injured and uh, it just doesn't have to be. Donna was expecting the worst for her daughter. The dog wanted to kill her you know I don't think the dog would have stopped. In 2011, San Diego County experienced its share of dog bites. Last year, we saw 264 dog bites. Kay Thompson is a nurse at Rady Children's Hospital. On a typical day, we see about 210 kids a day, and they come through with parents, sometimes both parents, sometimes one parent. But when they come in with a dog bite, it's particularly stressful because it's usually a family member, their own dog, that has caused the bite. The first thing we're going to do is practice having our dogs look at us when we say their name. But she's not only a nurse, she's also a dog trainer. I got all of my dog training experience or the beginnings of my dog training experience from training puppies for Canine Companions for Independence. I've recently started having my puppy classes in my yard. That way the whole family can come and we can incorporate dog training with the whole family and talk about the different safety mechanisms with the kids. Kay was given a grant from the Emergency Nurses Association of San Diego. She was tasked with finding a new injury prevention program. After talking with experts, she compiled cues dogs give us when they need their space. Dogs can't talk to us, so they tell us with their bodies certain times when they're feeling uncomfortable. The main one probably is just when they stiffen up. A lot of times their ears will go back and sort of be stiff against the head. Um, nothing's moving. Some other cues are the lip lick and the half moon eyes. The best advice that Kay has for children when confronted by a strange dog, be a tree. You want to hold still, fold your branches, which are your hands, and look down at your roots, which are your feet, and stay still and quiet until the dog goes away. Kay hopes that her work might be able to prevent injuries such as the ones Melanie sustained. Melanie thanks God that it wasn't worse for her. I think about it every so often. Sometimes when I'm doing my hair, I see this one and I go, oh. but. I don't remember most of the pain. I don't really remember the pain. Um, I don't, I think I was just blessed with like the perfect family and people and doctors to go through it with and that's what made it okay.